Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Sonia and I'm really pleased you're here. The fall, or autumn as many people prefer to call it, is my favorite time of year. Not only because of its cooler weather, which we're still kind of waiting on here in Texas, but because of all the wonderful fragrances and aromas that go with this time of year. I mean, you're talking cinnamon and ginger and nutmeg and clove. I mean, it just shouts the holidays. If you're planning a holiday or seasonal afternoon tea, I can't think of a better choice on your dessert tray than gingerbread cake. Not to be confused with gingerbread cookies, which are also delightful, but this is cake. You know, gingerbread has a richness and depth of flavor that pairs very well with tea. And if you're looking for something that evokes that wonderful feeling that this time of year can bring, it is an excellent choice. By the way, this old-fashioned recipe I'm showing you today has more ingredients than I usually like to give you. You know, I'm all about really tasty and really elegant, but really simple. But this recipe is exceptional because the ingredient list is so easy to assemble. I mean, it's all mixed up in one bowl with a whisk. Easy peasy. So here's our list of ingredients, and of course I will put the recipe and everything in the description box for you. But it's half a cup or 113 grams of unsalted butter, that's roughly one stick, softened. A half a cup or 125 milliliters of water, and I will be boiling that. A half a cup or 110 grams of light brown sugar, lightly packed. Now I weighed mine, but if you're using a measuring cup, just lightly pack it in. A half a cup or 168 milliliters of molasses. Now I'm using black strap, use whatever you've got. One large egg, now here in the States that's about 50 grams. One and a half cups or 187 grams of all-purpose flour. Two teaspoons of ground ginger. One teaspoon of ground cinnamon and one teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. Now, if you don't have that on hand, that's fine. You could easily just add in a quarter teaspoon of clove and a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. That's really the flavorings I'm going for. And pumpkin pie spice includes clove, nutmeg, ginger, and cinnamon. So it just, it, to me, it's easier just to go ahead and put in the pumpkin pie spice. A half a teaspoon of baking powder, followed by a half a teaspoon of baking soda, and finally, three quarter teaspoons of kosher salt. Now, if you don't have kosher salt on hand, that's fine. You can use regular table salt, but let me show you the difference in the two. Table salt is a much smaller grain and therefore is saltier by volume than kosher. So if you're going to use table salt, use only a half a teaspoon of table salt rather than three quarters of a teaspoon of kosher salt. And that's your ingredients. Now, when it comes to the pan you use for this recipe, you have options. Um, this recipe will fill this nine inch or 23 centimeter square pan. You could then just cut them into squares to serve, or you can use three of these mini loaf tins. Now, this is about a three and a half by six inch or roughly, I think about a nine by 15 centimeter uh, measurement, and it will fill three of these, or you could put them in this mini muffin tin. It's really up to you as to how you want to present this cake on your tea tray. Now, I have been told that, and I must agree trying it myself this way, the, the mini muffins seem to have just a slightly stronger flavor, not quite sure why, than the slices, but I like the look of the slices, so this is what I'm gonna to use today. So, next, let's preheat the oven. And we're going to set the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 180 degrees Celsius, gas mark four. Now I have lightly greased and lined all three of my pans with just a little bit of parchment paper, kind of this parchment sling. This cake will come out of the pans just fine, but I sort of like to have the parchment because it's so much easier to pull that out when the time comes. And you don't really have to worry about these end pieces, just these sides is fine. I'm going to set that aside, and now I'm going to start assembling our cake. Okay, in my bowl I have the softened butter, and now I'm going to add the boiling water. Now, just a tip on this, if you boil your water in the microwave, like I just did, 
when you reach for it, be sure and be very careful. Stir it before you reach for it because sometimes water in the microwave can overheat and if it does that, you can reach for it and by disturbing the molecules, it ends up uh, boiling over and you can get burned, so be very careful. We're gonna leave this for just a couple of minutes and then come back to it and mix it in. Okay, the butter has been sitting in the warm water for a couple of minutes. Now we're going to whisk it together until the butter is completely melted. Okay, that's done. Now we're going to whisk in the brown sugar. And the molasses. Another tip on things like molasses, when you have to put it in a measuring cup like this, if you just lightly spray it, um, it will come out a little easier. Okay. And that is all of our wet ingredients. Okay, now to that, I'm gonna add the flour. Okay, now that the flour is mixed in, now we'll add the spices. Oh, I wish you could smell this kitchen. It smells so good. Just this part of it, this, even before we get anything baked, just the smell of all those spices is wonderful. Baking powder, baking soda, and salt. That is it. Okay. Time to pour it into our pans. I'm just eyeballing this. So I'm just pouring a little bit in each pan to see how they're measuring up. I'm trying to do it as neatly as I can. Because the batter is so loose, it does tend to be a little on the drippy side. So before you know it, you're wearing some of it. <laughs> I think that's pretty good. On my measured amount, I hope. Now then, into the oven they go. And these will go in the oven for about 20 to 25 minutes or until a toothpick comes out clean. Oh my goodness, I wish you could smell this house. This smells so good. I did these for about 20 minutes, checked them with a toothpick. They were still a little undone. Put them back in for five more minutes, four or five more minutes, and now they're absolutely perfect. They sink down a little bit in the middle. That's 
fine. That's not a problem at all. Uh, they still taste wonderful and they will look beautiful once they are sliced. Out of the oven, this gingerbread is really good warm, but I'm going to let it cool completely before slicing and having it with a cup of tea. Just look how gorgeous this is. This is a wonderful, wonderful cake. And it's sliced up so well, too. Oh, that is so pretty. And this is one of those cakes or, or breads that you could have on your tea table and eat with your fingers. Unless, of course, you put things on it like um, whipped cream or caramel sauce or even lemon curd would be great with this. I've just dusted it with a little powdered sugar and it's perfect. So let's give it a try. Mmm, that is heavenly. It's got just a little bit of crust on the outside, but the crumb is really moist. It's really tender, and yet it's kind of a tight crumb, so it's not going to fall apart on you when you pick it up. The spices even come a little bit after you've, you've had your first bite. It's like, oh yeah, there it is, there it is, and it's, it's just wonderful. I love this cake, and it's especially good this time of year. And you know, not only can you make this a day ahead of serving, as long as you keep it in an airtight container, you can actually put like those other two um, loaves that I made, you could freeze those. And then if somebody drops by during the holidays, you could take one out, give it a few minutes for it to come to room temperature, slice it up and have gingerbread and tea with your friends during the holidays. It's a wonderful cake. And there you have it, a simple recipe for your holiday tea table. I hope you'll give this recipe a try, and I hope you enjoy it just as much as I do. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that like button, and consider subscribing for more afternoon tea videos. Until next time, bye-bye.